Greetings from Minister Maker. I want to talk to you today about praying in the Spirit. How to pray in the Spirit. How is it that we pray in the Spirit? How can we begin to pray in the Spirit? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in God's Spirit. This has always been a topic of dispute and controversy in the church, but let me tell you, it's imperative that we pray in the Spirit. We are in a spiritual warfare, a spiritual battle, and one of the things that helps us overcome the battle we're in is praying in the Spirit. Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, where we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Hebrews or Ephesians 6, 12 through 18. He ends it by saying, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. <clears throat> praying in the Spirit is a must. It prepares us for the battle that we may be praying, soon facing. It's why Jesus and in the morning, rising up a great while before day, went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. It will begin to, and I'm sure Jesus definitely prayed in the Spirit, I'm sure. Prayed in the Holy Ghost. It was preparation for the battle he's getting ready to face. Right before beginning his public ministry, then was Jesus led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, then the then he became, became hungry and we'll go through all of it, but, but, but he began his spiritual battle. But he spent 40 days in fasting and pray, prayer. Praying led by the Spirit. Hallelujah to God. We need to pray in the Spirit and it'll help strengthen us and prepare us for the battles that are forthcoming. That we have no way of knowing what we will be facing. And if we'll begin to pray in the Spirit Every day, God will prepare us and equip us to face the battle that's before us and to overcome the battle when, when it arises. Hear me. It's imperative we pray in the Spirit I'm not going to take a lot of your time this morning or today. You know what time of day it is with you. But I want to give you five things. And I just added one that was four <laughs> as I was speaking. Five ways to pray in the Spirit. Each one of these ways will help us in our journey To allow the Holy Spirit to guide and direct us 
to be led by the Spirit, to do spiritual warfare before the battle begins in, through prayer and the Spirit. After the battle begins, we don't know, there's no need, need to pray at that point. We should have already been praying. If we hadn't been praying up to that point, then we might find ourselves in the mess. We should have already been praying because after the battle begins, Jesus took out the sword. It is written, it is written, it is written. Praying all with all prayer and supplication of the Spirit. First and foremost, praying in the Spirit is prayer that's in complete utter dependency upon the Spirit of God. Complete and utter dependency. Knowing that I cannot pray. I don't know how to pray. I don't know what I should pray for. I don't know you know how I should pray. And it may be sometimes God will lead us in different ways if we're really praying with dependence on the Spirit. But but we, we need Him. I can't pray, God, without you. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to, to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Fact of the matter is, I would never pray if it wasn't the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, crying out for within me, giving me a longing to talk to God, to speak with Him, to seek His face. Through the new birth, that His Spirit comes in with us and cries out, Abba, Father, because your sons, God, has sent the spirit of your son, his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. Place Abba, Daddy, you're made for Daddy. And Father, both intimacy and reverence, we're crying out to him. I can't do it. Apart from me, Jesus said, you can do nothing, John 15, 5. Jesus helps us in, to pray through the, the agency of the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit of God. Dependency upon Him. That means we're not just mouthing some words, some vain repetition. Lord, help me to pray. As I ought. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Romans 8, 26 and 27. We need Him. I can't pray without Him. And if we do, it's just mouthing dead, vain repetition. Oh, our first prayer should be, Lord, let your Spirit enable me to pray as I ought. I can't do it without Him. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. And help me to pray. Help me to seek you. Secondly, we need to, praying in the Spirit is Spirit-led praying. Goes right along with dependency on those Spirit, but takes a little step farther. It's Spirit-led praying. The Holy Spirit leading us in what to pray. My wife probably better than me is. I, I, she says she's first thing in the morning. She's praying 
And all of a sudden, God directs you, pray this way, or pray this, or pray this way. We need to be led by the Spirit in our praying. What to pray for, who to pray for, and how we're to pray. And what we're to do in our time of prayer and seeking the face of God. Spirit-led praying. This can even be position. I don't think any position, man. We're praying in the name of Jesus. But sometimes I felt like the Lord leads me to kneel and pray. There have been times I felt like the Lord did that wanted me to lie prostrate before him on my face to the ground. There's times I just feel like I, I, I'm a pacer. Sometimes I pace when I pray. Sometimes I'm quieter in my prayer time. Often not. <laughs> Sometimes I'm rowdy in my prayer time. They lift up their voice in one accord. Acts 2, 24. Sometimes I feel led to really lay hold of God. Sometimes I just feel led just to bask in his presence and to worship him. Sometimes I feel led to, to pray the word. Most of the time I do. I find that's powerful praying because it's spirit inspired. Being led by the... Then was Jesus led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. He was led, after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, then, then he was tempted. He spent 40 days and 40 nights in fasting and prayer, led by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit led him to pray thus. And what to do. In, even the place he was praying. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will lead us this is where I want you to go pray. I want you to go pray in your prayer, prayer closet. I, I want you to go for a walk in the neighborhood and, and pray. I want you to sit on your back deck or I want you to uh, go in your bedroom and pray. He'll, sometimes he'll lead us to where to pray it. Spirit-led praying. It's dependency upon the Holy Spirit and spirit-led praying. Thirdly, Praying in the Spirit is being born along in our prayers by the Spirit. This kind of prayer usually takes place after we have already spent considerable time with God in prayer. It seldom takes place when we first begin. Isaiah 64, 7 says, we often have to stir ourselves up to lay a hold of Him. I find... Often when I start praying, even though I feel like the Lord's led me to pray and wants me to pray, and I find my place of prayer, and all of us, after I'm praying for a while, sometimes it's a few minutes, sometimes it could be, I've been praying for quite a while, doing my best, stirring up myself, but somebody might feel like you're cutting teeth, then all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost takes over and just words begin to flow out of your mouth and you begin to pray and praise and worship and seek His face and you're directed in your prayers by His, by his Spirit and the words just begin to flow out of your mouth effortless, effortlessly. That's why Jude says in Jude 20, stay in the first chapter, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves in your, on your most holy faith, in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's the type of prayer, Jude 20, where you're being born along in your prayers by the Holy, by the Holy Spirit. It's, 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 it's concerted. It, it's, it's where He just takes over, and you know it. It's not you anymore. You're mouthing the word, but it's just flowing. That seldom happens when we first begin. And often people don't get to that place of being born along in their prayers by the Spirit because they don't take the time to stir themselves up 
That stirring up process is not always easy. Like cutting teeth. But then there comes that time where there's a breakthrough and you begin to pray, born along in your prayers by the Holy Ghost. Let's commit ourselves to concerted, concentrated, fervent praying until it's no longer us praying, but the Holy Ghost praying through us. Born along in our prayers by the Holy Ghost. Then, thirdly, praying in tongues. Acts 2, 4, after the Holy Spirit had been poured out in Pentecost, they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, ability, or prompted their speech, Acts 2, 4. When I'm praying in tongues, the, it's the Holy Spirit prompting my speech. But I want you to notice, they spoke. It's not the Holy Spirit speaking through you. It's your spirit, your human spirit, praying in the God, moved by, prompted by, the Holy Spirit in your speech in this unknown tongue. But it's you that speaks. Someone say, well, what if it's just me? It is you. Paul said, I will pray with my spirit and I will pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit and I will sing with my understanding. Singing with your spirit bypasses your under, your understanding, it goes from your spirit man directly to God. That's powerful. First Corinthians 14, 14, 15, again, I, I just quoted a minute ago. I will pray with my spirit and I will pray with my understanding. Both aspects are important. Almost giving us indication that given an equal time to both. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14 2, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. When I'm praying to my spirit, I'm bypassing my understanding. My spirit, man, is praying directly to God. And what man know, knows the things of the Spirit of God but the spirit of the spirit of the man which is in him? That's powerful praying. My mind is unfruitful. But my spirit is edified. It's building up myself. He that prophesies speaks unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. But he that speaks an unknown tongue edifies himself. Edifies himself. It builds you up, your spirit up. Praying in the spirit. In the Holy Spirit. But it's your spirit praying. There's a couple cool things about that, I think. One, I'm speaking mysteries to God. There are times when I don't know how to pray. And, and, and as I begin to pray in tongues, sometimes for an extended period of time, the Holy Spirit is moving upon my human spirit and I'm speaking mysteries to God, Paul said. That's why he said, I think God is speaking in tongues more than y'all. Mysteries. I'm praying th for things and how to pray. Praying in such a way to move God. To touch the throne of God. That I would have no way of knowing how to pray. In, in the natural. In my understanding. With my mind. My mind is unfruitful. 
but my spirit is fruitful, speaking mysteries to God. Oh, it may be those times when you don't know what to do. You don't know how to pray. I don't know how to deal with this situation. Oh, God, I don't even know what you want. How do you want me to pray? Then you just begin to pray in the Spirit, pray in tongues. And your mind may be unfruitful, but your spirit can mysteries to God. Another thing you want to notice is we don't know what we're saying. He that speaks unto no one, speaking not unto men. Man doesn't know what we're saying. Therefore, I can't have unbelief on what I'm praying for. Hallelujah to God. I'm just praying in faith the whole way. My spirit, your mind is what has unbelief, not your spirit. God just gave that to me. It's your mind is what has unbelief, not your spirit. When you're bypassing your understanding and praying directly to God through your human spirit, speaking to God, you can't have any unbelief. It's only an expression of faith. If you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you can get that, you can receive that right now. All you have to do is be born again. See, if you're born again, you have the Spirit of God dwelling in you. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his, Romans 8 9. And it's important to distinguish. I don't have time to get into this, I'll do another lesson on QA on tongues. But listen, it's important we distinguish between being baptized at conversion into the body of Christ and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, in John 20, 22, breathed on his disciples and received the Holy Ghost. How many know Jesus says, you breathed on you and said, receive something, you're going to get it. They were still to go and tarry in Jerusalem until they be endued with power from on high. This was a subsequent experience to that of salvation. Know you not that you're the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you because you put your faith in Jesus and you've been regenerated, received a new birth from above, and God's Spirit's dwelling in you. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, For by one Spirit were you all baptized into one body. The Spirit takes us and immerses us into the body of Christ. We're placed into the body of Christ. Being assembled together, Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, which you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. We're in the Holy Ghost not many days hence. The Holy Spirit takes us at conversion, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and places us into the body of Christ. Subsequent to that, there's a place where in the Spirit of God that already dwells in me, I can be immersed into the Holy Spirit. Jesus, I indeed baptize you with water, John said, but he who comes after me, Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the baptizer. And he's placing us in the Holy Ghost. In the Spirit. Immerses us into the Spirit. Those are two distinct, different baptisms. And we're baptized in the Spirit. When it came on Pentecost, their Spirit spoke. It was they who spoke. Moved on by the Spirit. When our Spirit is immersed into, there's a reaction. Our human spirit reacts and begins to speak in a language we do not know. God can baptize you in the Holy Spirit right now. That potential is already in you if you're born again. Ask Jesus, the baptizer, to baptize you in the Holy Ghost right now, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, then you must, in faith, speak. They spoke. 
It's something you do. It's something you choose to do. And as you do, the Holy Spirit will continue to prompt. It might be a syllable you first comes to you or whatever it may be, but just begin to speak. And the Holy Spirit will take over. But it's you who speak. Let me pray for you right now. If you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and as I pray, I'm stretching my hand out toward this screen right now. Paul, when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came up on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Acts 19 6. We'll believe that the and these this baptism of the Holy Spirit opens you up to a new realm of the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. Moved on by the Holy Ghost. Lord, I just ask right now, your people right now, that they be received by faith right now. And be immersed into your spirit. Receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Of speaking in other tongues. Right now we pray God. Now begin to speak in Jesus name. As I speak, speak. Now just begin to continue to use this gift of tongues. Praying with the day. Paul said, I will pray with my understanding. I will pray with my spirit. It's something you must choose to do. But as you do, it edifies yourself. The last aspect I want to talk to you about praying in the whole in the spirit is groanings too deep for words. Romans 8 26, I quote again, likewise the spirit also help with our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings, or through us, with groanings too deep for words. This is problem actually. Or Romans 8, 26. This is a, probably one of the deepest forms of praying in the Spirit that any of us will ever do. Most of us, this will not happen. This will happen very seldom. Sadly, some of us, this will, some will never happen. It's a place where we get to in prayer and seeking God that we're so burdened in spirit. Notice it's not even tongues. Too deep for words. Groanings went in our spirit. That we just, it, it just groans out to God, crying out to Him from the depths of our being. His spirit groaning within us. Abba, Father, help God. This is probably one of the deepest forms of prayer we will ever experience. And when you experience it, you'll know it. And when you're there, don't walk away. Until God has removed the burden from you. And you know you're finished. Because God's spirit has released you. And the burden is lifted. Father God, I pray right now in Jesus' name. I ask for your precious Holy Spirit. We need his help, Lord. We need his help to pray. We need his help to pray as we should. We need his divine direction. We need you to, to be born along in our prayers by the Holy Spirit, God, and bring us, God, those who haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, God, I pray that before this day is out, God, that they'll begin to at least utter that first syllable, God, into this newfound relationship with you, God. And I pray, God, you would burden us in prayer until we begin to groan within us in, in prayer that's too deep for words in Jesus' name. Now baptize your people in your spirit. Immerse us in all that you are. Fill us to overflowing with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' matchless name. 
Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.